Okay. Uh, welcome everybody if you're listening in. Uh, thank you for your invitation. Um, this is a home meeting tonight, but there's also people joining online. Uh, I'll just introduce myself first of all. And, uh, I'm from a ministry called Servants of the Lord Ministry. Servants of the Lord Ministry's name is the Father of the And that's a teaching and training ministry sent to the body of Christ. And its purpose is to find those who have a heart after God. And who want to know Him personally. That is to know not just the about him, but to know him intimately in a personal, intimate way. And typically we concentrate on that communication system. So that somebody can communicate from their heart and share something from their heart and God will share with them. That's a precious gift that we have. Everything that I'm talking about is what Jesus paid for on the cross. He made it possible for us to come in the presence of God, live in his presence, and communicate with him two ways, not one way. That's not just for a few special people. It's for every child of God. It's the first thing we should learn how to do. And it's not the result of maturity. It's the result of simple faith. Understand that Christianity is not just another religion, but a relationship with the living God. We were created this way. We were actually created in the image of God to represent Him, to serve Him, and not to do anything of ourselves. Our whole life was supposed to be controlled from Him. And we were supposed to be an expression of the Father. And we're supposed to be expressing that love that the Father is. He doesn't just love, He is love. So if, if we're connected to the Father, everything we're doing, we're doing out of love. Not just to each other, but to God first. And that means we spend our time seeking God for commandments. And we believe, that is, we seek His perfect will and do what he tells us to do even if it's hard or challenging that's especially good because it, it requires a greater expression of love but if God is directing it then it's possible to do that and we can sow that love into God and we get love back so this starts a love relationship relationship with God, where you prefer God above yourself, the same way he prefers you above himself. We were, we were supposed to be like him, but the only way you can do that is to deny yourself and start seeking God for specific commands. You won't find them written down somewhere in the, in, in the scriptures. Everyone is at a different level. God knows exactly where you are now. And he promises that he will not try beyond what you're able to endure. But you have to believe. If you don't believe, you can't receive. You might close your heart to God just simply because some of the commands he gives you are challenging or maybe unpleasant. 
on haastavia ja epämukavia. But if you know who God is, and jos et tunne kuka Jumala on, you know he loves you, ja tunne kuka että rakastaa sinua, and everything he does out of love, ja että kaikki mitä hän tekee on rakkaudesta, then you're going to seek him for commandments. Niin sinun on se etsit häntä saadaksesi käskyjä. A very simple scripture that's in in the New Testament. Yksi erittäin yksinkertainen raamattu tuosta uudesta testamentista. It's found in John 14:15. Löytyy Johanneksen evankeliumista 14:15. And this is just what Jesus said to his disciples. Tämä on se mitä Jeesus sanoi opetuslapsille. He promised them that he would look after them. Hän lupasi että hän pitäisi heistä huolta. He would provide for them. Ja antaisi niin kuin heille mitä hän tarvitsee. He said that you do greater works than I do. Hän sanoi että he teet jopa suurempiakin tekoja kuin minä. But he said most of all if you love me keep my commandments. Hän ennen kaikkea jos te rakastatte minua, niin pitäkää minun käskyni. So you can deceive yourself. Voit pettää itsesi. You can do great works. Te voit tehdä suuria tekoja. But if the Lord didn't direct those works, jos mm. Jeesus ei ohjannut sinua tekemään niitä tekoja, he is not in charge. Jos hän ei ole vastuussa siitä, it's not love. Niin se ei ole sinun rakkaus. And this is what a lot of people miss. Ja tämä on se, mikä ohi monet kulkee. In Matthew 7:21, Matteus 7:21, se sanoo very clearly. Sanoo se hyvin selkeästi. That in the last days this is going to happen. Että viimeisenä päivänä näin tulee tapahtumaan. And in Matthew 7:21 says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ei jokainen, joka sanoo minulle, Herra, Herra, pääse tästä valtaan. But he that does the will of the Father is in heaven. Vaan se, joka tekee ja toivoo sen isän tahdon. The kingdom of heaven is real place. Jumalan valtakunta. Like any country. Todellinen paikka. Se on ikään kuin täysin. Maa, siinä on rajat, rajat siis. You have to get inside of it. Sinun tulee päästä sinne sisään. And everyone in the kingdom of heaven is doing the perfect will of God. Kaikki taivasten valtakunnassa tekee Jumalan täydestä tahtoa. They're not doing their own will. Ei tee omaa tahtoa. They are connected to God. He on yhteydessä Jumalaan. They know that the plan must come from the Father. He tietää sen, että suunnitelma on tuotava isältä. The Father will get the glory. Isä tulee saamaan kunnian. He says, I'll give my glory to no man. Isä on, että kunniani minä en toiselle anna. So everything that comes from the Father must be done. Eli kaikki se, mikä tulee isältä, tulee tehdä. And we're just servants of him, if you see it, you see it that way. Näin voisi nähdä, että me ollaan hänen palveluita perustaa. He blesses us, he honors us. Siunaamme, että kunnioittaa meitä. We get the privilege of intimacy with God, doing the perfect will of God. Se etuoikeus saada läheisyys Jumalan kanssa, kun me tehdään hänen täydessä tahtomaan. But he's not going to share his glory with us at this point. Mutta hän ei jaa kunniansa meidän kanssamme. He says, we... Do you love me? If you love me, keep my commandments. So the kingdom of heaven is a real place. And we must make every effort to enter. Tehdä kaikki voitamme me päästäksemme sisälle. Jesus said in Matthew 18 and verse 3. Jesus sanoi Matteus 18 ja verse 3. He said how to do that. Hän sanoi mitä se tehdään. And it says here in Matthew 18 verse 3. Ja Matteus 18 verse 3 sanotaan. Say verily, except you become like a little child. Ja totisti minä sanon teille, ettei te käänny ja tule lasten kaltaiseksi. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Ette pääse taivasten valtaan. That's not very popular. Se ei kovin kahden suuri suosiossa. Most people want to do something else or be in charge of their lives. Monet haluaa tehdä muuta tai itse hallita omaa elämäänsä. But to become like a little child. Se, että jos tulee pienen lapsen kaltainen. There are little children with us today. Meillä on pieniä lapsia keskuudessa tänään. I'm talking about just that ability to just instantly obey. Ja puhun siitä kyvystä, niin kuin voi välittömästi totella. That's what Jesus was referring to. Tähän Jeesus viittasi. To trust God like a little child. Että luottaa Jumalaan pienen lapsen tavoin. God is the only one who sees the end from the beginning. Jumala on ainoa, joka näkee lopun alusta asti. So he is transmitting his perfect will for your life. Ja hän lähettää täydestä tahtoa sun elämässä varten. And if you believe that, jos sä uskot siihen, you will spend your time trying to hear more accurately. Sä kulutat aikas yrittäjänä kuulla häntä selkeämmin. You don't mind if there's a little bit more pressure involved. Et sä välitä siitä, vaikka vähän enemmän painetta. In fact, you're actually praying for trials and difficulties. Sä rukoilet, että sä saisit vaikeuksia ja vaikeuksia. Because you know those things are going to expose maybe some deficiencies in your communication system. Koska sä tiedät, että nää tilanteet tulee paljastamaan mahdolliset vajavuudet sinun 
siinä kommunikaatiossa God is speaking all the time. Jumala puhuu kaiken aikaa. But there's other voices too. Mutta on myös toisia ääniä. There's also the devil speaking. Ja myös perkele, joka puhuu. There's also your own flesh speaks to you. Oma lihasi voi puhua. And you might be tempted to listen to a wrong voice. Ja sinulla voi olla kiusaus kuunnella toista väärää ääntä. If you're not ääntä. hearing God, you're hearing another voice. Jos et sä kuule Jumalaa, sä kuulet silloin toista ääntä. And sometimes you only find out when the bad fruit appears. Ja joskus sä selvität sen vain silloin, kun se paha hedelmä tulee esiin. By that time you know you need to repent. Ja siinä vaiheessa ainakin tiedät, että tulee tehdä paremmin. So if you're really seeking God and you're seeking God's kingdom, you don't mind a bit of pressure. The kingdom of heaven is different to the kingdom of God. <coughs> in the kingdom of heaven, as I've said, everyone in that kingdom is doing the perfect will of God. Paul said in Romans 14, 17, he said the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, sorry, it's not a question of food or drink, but it is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So now I can experience that, I may not be perfect, I'm Trusting God, I'm seeking God. I'm not without sin. But at the same time, I can experience the kingdom of God now. And I know when I'm in it. There's no doubt. I get peace and joy. This is not the peace that the world offers. This peace is the peace that passes all understanding. And it's the joy of the Lord. <coughs> this is not the joy that comes from doing something nice or pleasant. This joy comes from being in right standing with God. You can be born again and not have this joy. You might be born again, but you might be baptized in lemon juice. But if you really have this joy, it doesn't go away when your circumstances change. It, it only is related to your personal, intimate relationship with God. Läheisen ja henkilökohtaisen suhteen kanssa, miten se on Jumalan kanssa. So if you're doing things to obey God, jos sä teet asioita totellaksesi Jumalaa, it may not look good to somebody else, niin se ei ehkä näytä hyvältä joku toisen ihmisen. If you're doing things to please him, mutta jos sä teet asioita miellyttää, I'm not trying to please man. Etkä yritä miellyttää ihmisen. I'm trying to please God. Mä yritän miellyttää Jumalaa. If man doesn't like that, that's their problem. Jos ihminen ei tekee, niin ei tekee. I can't please them anyway. Ei se ole heidän ongelma, mä en voi heitä muutenkaan miellyttää. But I can please God. Mutta mä voin miellyttää Jumalaa. And the best way to start is by seeking his commandments and keeping within those boundaries. Then I can ask him for a more challenging command. But I know God is faithful. It doesn't matter how great that command comes. Uh, he's going to give me everything that's necessary to obey that command. But again, it all depends on your faith. If you're not seeking God for commands, you don't have much faith. When you're sitting there with doubts and unbelief, but if you believe in the kingdom of God, you are going to ask God for the maximum command that you can possibly do today. And like I say, leave, leave it up to God, whatever he decides. He cannot deny his word. And he cannot deny himself. So you just ask away. Start asking God for commands in complicated situations. If you look at it like this, if you have to obey God, and something's a little bit more challenging, then that equates to a greater expression of love. So you should be happy that things are not comfortable or a bit more challenging. But that's not maybe the way we think about it in the natural. Today, if you're comfortable, everything bill is paid, we think that you've been somehow successful or God's blessed you. Mm -hmm. 
menestyksekäs ja lasku tulee maksettua ja saat, saat hyvin, hyvin taloudellisesti niin asiat, niin sä ajattelet silloin Jumalan siunaa sinua. Then when we see somebody struggling, trying to do things under complicated circumstances. Ja me nähdään, että jollakin on haasteita tehdä asioita vaikeissa olosuhteissa. Or they're struggling to pay the bills. Ja kamppailee laskujen maksamisen kanssa. We assume, well that person God's not, not happy with. Ja me oletetaan silloin, että Jumala ei ole tyytyväinen tähän ihmiseen. But it's the exact opposite. Mutta asia voi olla, on täysin päinvastoin. So if you're going through challenging circumstances. Joten jos, jos sä kuulet. That's like stretching your faith. So you see, you're going to have to ask God what to do. You're going to have to ask God what to do. You might listen to some of these prosperity preachers. They come along and tell you, you know, try this, do this, whatever, pray this special prayer. And they might even quote a few verses. But it won't fix anything. You can have natural wisdom, or you can have godly wisdom. Always using natural wisdom to solve the situation nothing is changing in your life <laughs> natural wisdom doesn't solve anything it's a temporary fix <laughs> It's like, it's like taking a paracetamol for a headache. That's what you do. You take away the pain, you feel better, but it's coming back. But godly wisdom is going to lead you to the root of sin. And it's going to expose the real issues. It's not going to make any sense to your natural mind. God says, my ways are higher than your ways, as the heavens are above the earth. I don't care if you've been to Bible school, whatever you've done. You've been walking with God for 30 years. You are never going to understand God's ways with your natural carnal mind. The only way you can appreciate God's ways is keep humble. That's the rule. Keep humble. And just be prepared to obey Him. Do what He says. Learn to recognize His voice. Do things because you love Him. And then you get the explanation later. Now that doesn't look very smart either. Especially when you see man using a completely opposite system today. If you go to university, they don't use that system. You go there, you study, you fill your mind with information. All that information you probably don't need to know in a secular business. But in the end, you're just filling your mind with information. So you don't have to like ask God anything. And this is the danger now. You're either trusting God with all your heart. That, that doesn't mean you don't study. It doesn't mean you don't read the word of God. But you don't do anything until God tells you. That way you don't end up with any additional information in your mind. That you don't need or you're not qualified to know. The problem is with knowledge, knowledge helps you up. Then you're heading for a fall. Then you're heading for a fall. You've got all that information in your head. And when it comes to making a decision, you don't ask God. You just go ahead and make the decision yourself. Based on all the information that you've studied using your natural carnal mind. Mm. And you will always, always have a shallow relationship with God. And it's not, nothing to do with the church you're going to. Nothing to do with the pastor. If you want to know what your problem looks like, go to the nearest mirror, look right in there. You are the problem. <laughs> because you're going to the wrong tree. And God created Adam. He put him in the garden. And he told him very clearly of all the trees of the field you can eat.
he could take from the tree of life. Hän olisi voinut ottaa siitä elämänpuusta. There's many trees he could have taken from. Oli monia puita, mistä hän olisi voinut syödä. one tree you must never take from, in that day you shall surely die. Että on yksi puista, että saa koskaan syödä. Sinä päivänä, kun hän syöt, sä tulet kuolemalla kuolemalla. When I first heard that, or read that, kun mä ensi kerran luin sen, I laughed at Adam. Mä nauran Adamille. I said, you fool. Mä sanoin, sinä oh. hyperys. Of all the things you were told not to do, you did it. Kaikista niistä asioista, mitä sulle käskitti, että ei saa tehdä, sä teit just sen. I was doing this, God spoke to me by grace. said, you're also the fool then, because you do that every day. I apologize, I repented. Any time you consult your reasoning and understanding, you are taken from that knowledge of good and evil. You're going to die. You're going to suffer somewhere on the way. It's just a matter of time. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Sin, let me define it for you. Sin is anything contrary to God's perfect will for your life in thought, purpose or action. Sin is not just committing bad things. Sin is also admitting from doing the thing you should have done. Se on myöskin se sijaan, että sä et tee sitä, mitä sinun olisi pitänyt. And replacing with dead works. Ja sit sä teet sen sijaan kuolleita tekoja. Anything you do that is not directed by the Spirit is a dead work. Kaikki se, mitä sä teet, mikä ei ole Jumalan hengen ohjaamaa, on kuollut teko. So now is the time to learn to communicate with God. Nyt on aika oppia kommunikoimaan Jumalan kanssa. You just got to learn to obey Him without thinking. Sinun tulee vaan oppia tottelemaan häntä ajattelematta. I tell people all the time, thinking is a dangerous occupation. Why are you doing it? Why do you let even say that thinking is a dangerous occupation? Why are you doing it? I mean, why do you think? Why is it a dangerous occupation? You must think because you've got all the information. So I think because you've got all the information. You do not have all the information. You don't have all the information. Only one person has all the information. Only one person has all the information. And that is God. It's a human. Are you going to trust him? Are you going to let him run your life? You may have accepted Jesus as your personal savior. But that doesn't mean he is Lord of your life. Like I said, the kingdom of heaven waits for you. Are you going to enter? If you don't become like a little child, you'll never enter. Never. And you'll be shut outside, you'll be trying to get in, but you won't get in. You'll say, oh, I'm born again, I've done these miracles, or I've done this, I've done that. In Matthew 7, 22, we see it here. And this is what Jesus said. And we're coming to that time now. We're in the last days. And at this time, this is what's going to happen in the last days. Verse 22 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name did many wonderful works. Verse 23 says, he says, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The word iniquity here means basically departing from the truth. Iniquity is not just a sin. It is you can only commit iniquity if you already know the right thing to do. You have to be enlightened. You have to know the truth, but you don't stick to the truth. You listen instead to your flesh, and you do something contrary to what God has told you to do for the sake of your flesh. When you actually do good repentance, and you get to the root of sin, you'll find it's the same thing every time. 
se, se oli selviä se, että se on joka, joka kerta sama asia. Now that sounds a bit boring, doesn't it? Se kuulostaa vähän tylsäteks vaan. But it's the same root. Mutta siinä on sama juuri. The root you'll find at the root of all sin. Sä tulet löytämään sy- kaiken synnin juurilta. Is a lie that you believe to be the truth. Sellainen valhe, jonka sä uskot olevan totuus. Not a lie that you believe to be a lie. Ei sellainen valhe, jonka sä uskot olevan valhe. If you believe that lie is a lie, you won't believe it. Jos sä uskot, että valhe on valhe, niin sinä et usko siihen. But if you believe something is the truth, jos sä uskot jonkin asian, You might believe it. And the only reason you believe that line is because you're afraid of something or you want something. You want something for your flesh and you believe that you can serve two masters and God doesn't notice. You can't do that. God made you very special. He didn't create you like the animals. He created you in his image. And when he created you, he created you as to be functioning directly with the Father. We saw that in the beginning. When God created Adam, he was in the garden. This is, he's not even a day old. And God brought all the animals before him. And he just said, name them all. Like well, he didn't even know what anything was at that time. His brain's blank. Just been created. I mean, he, he knew nothing. But God then spoke, he listened, and totally. he operated the same way Jesus did. And the same way Jesus Sin had not separated man from God. And he operated the same way Jesus did when he was on the earth. In John 5.30, we read it for ourselves. And this is how Jesus lived. He said, of myself, I can do nothing. As I hear, as the voice comes to me, so I give my decision. Jesus never did something in Independently of God. Jesus ei koskaan tehnyt mitään niin kuin, itsenäisesti erossa Jumalasta. People itsenäisesti are afraid of that. Ihmiset pelkää sitä. They think, well, you know, how can I do that? If, if you think that to let God control them is somehow bad. Mitä voin tehdä se ikään kuin Jumalan, se että Jumalan hallitsisi sinua olisi joku paha asia. I know that that might apply to some other people in your life. Mä luulen, että se voisi ehkä kaikkea jonkin toisiin ihmisiin sun elämässä. Can imagine anyone else controlling you would make a mess of your life. Jos joku toinen sinua hallitsisi, se olisi sinun elämässä ihan sekaisin. There's one person. Mutta on yksi henkilö. And that's the father. Se on isä. He won't make a mess of your life, he'll turn it around. Hän ei tee siitä sotkua, vaan hän kääntää sen ympäri. And everything he does, he does out of love. Ja kaikki mitä hän tekee, hän tekee sen rakkaudesta käsin. But do you believe? Uskotko sinä? I look at your life. Katso sun elämääsi. And if you cannot obey an instant command, jos et sä kykene tottelemaan välittömästi käsin, that shows unbelief. Se osoittaa, että se on epäuskoa. But he loves you. Mutta hän rakastaa sinua. So you can let him control you. Että sä voit antaa hänen hallitsi sinua. And I try to explain this sometimes, and I use different illustrations. Mä tiedän, kun selittää, että mä käytän erilaisia vertauskuvia. One illustration, which sounds a bit unpleasant. Tää on sellainen vertauskuva, joka tuntuu vähän... I say you need to be a robot for Jesus. That puts a lot of people off. <laughs> Just ask God. Is that right? Because he loves us. And he makes the right decisions every minute. And here we are trying to use our natural mind, consult all the things I understand and know. Or I have to understand it first before I can release my faith. That's not the proper way. That's not how we're supposed to operate. We're supposed to be able to recognize that what we're hearing is the truth. And you're supposed to recognize the voice you're hearing. You know, if you, for example, somebody phoned you today on this phone here, and you picked it up, and you said, excuse me, uh, who is this? But it was your wife or your husband or something you knew, you say hi. Because you know that person, you recognize their voice, and you can respond instantly to that person. 
niin vastata tai reagoida tuolle ihmisille. Well, that's the way we're supposed to have a relationship with God. Tämä on se tapa, millä meidän, tulisi, meidän suhde tulisi olla Jumalan kanssa. So, now is the time to learn to hear his voice. Nyt on aika oppia kuulemaan hänen äänensä. So, here is Jesus said on the last days. Jeesus sanoi, että lopun aikoina, viimeisenä päivänä. Many are not going to be operating this way. Monet ei tule elämään tällä Instead, tavalla. Instead they're going to try to do works of many kinds. Sen sijaan yrittää tehdä monenlaisia eri tekoja. They're doing dead works. Eli kuolleita tekoja. Which shows that they're completely immature. Osoittaa se, että on täysin epäkypsiä. The first thing that we should do when we come to Christ. Ensimmäinen asia, joka meidän tulisi tehdä, kun me tullaan Kristuksen is vuoksi. Is actually repent of dead works. On tehdä parannus kuolleista tekoja. Most of the time we hear in testimonies of people repenting of bad works. Me kuullaan monesti todistukset ihmiset tekevät. Supposed to repent of good works. Anything that the Holy Spirit didn't tell you to do, you need to repent of it. But we bring good works come into the church. Even helping God is a sin now. And if you really want to let God get the glory, if that's what you keep telling me, then you're just going to listen trust and obey. And you're not going to help God. Because if you help God, then somebody else might say, oh, I know why that happened, because you did this and you did that. So I, I say to God, I say, God, you don't bless me. Don't bless me. You do exactly what you want to do. If you want to bless me, bless me. If you don't want to bless me, don't bless me. I'm not, I'm not serving you for blessings. Uh, I humbled myself. And I made a decision. And for years I did serve God for blessings. And I had to repent of that. And I started serving God just because I loved it. And I just... I, I couldn't even believe he would use me after I've made such a mess of my Christian life. And I humbled myself, I asked God to forgive me, and I, said, I made a decision, I just want to know you. Just want to be your servant, just want to do whatever you want me to do, that's it. Before that time, ministry was my focus, other things were my focus. Plenty of iniquity in my life at that time. And I might have tried to convince somebody I know God. But if you really know God, you can ask God any question, he'll tell you the answer in about one second. Because you communicate with him. You share your heart with him. It's not like you have to have a religious subject to talk about. You don't have to discuss the scripture either. You can just share your heart with him and he will share his heart with you. Yeah, like I said, that doesn't that's not something you get after fifty years of maturity or something. Everything I've said tonight is by grace through faith. I've got the gift of eternal life the same way you got the gift of eternal life. If you don't know what the gift of eternal life is, not just living forever, even the devil is going to live forever. Eternal life is not living forever. Jesus defined what eternal life is. Jesus defined it in John 17. And he was praying for those disciples. This is what he prayed. And he didn't just pray for the disciples, he also prayed for those who were that those disciples were going to reach. In John 17, verse 20, it says, Neither prayer for these alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through their word. Here Jesus is praying now. He's not just praying for those disciples. He's praying for those who will believe on the word that those disciples wrote. 
pyrit uskomaan siihen sanaan, joka nämä opetusopit kirjoitti. So if you are reading his word, jos sä luet hänen sanansa, you read the scriptures, sä luet niitä raamatun kohtia, Jesus here is praying for you. Jeesus tässä rukoilee sinun puolestasi. And in the first three verses, ja ensimmäisessä kolmessa jakeessa, this is what Jesus prayed. Tämä on se, mitä Jeesus rukoili. Now remember the timing. Muista tämä ajoitus. This is a time when he was about to go into the garden of Gethsemane. Hän aikaisessa mennä sinne Gethsemane puutarhaan. And in that situation he wasn't thinking about himself. Hän ei ajatellut itseään. He's only thinking about those disciples. Hän vaan ajatteli jotain opetuslapsia. This is what he prayed. Näin hän rukoili. He lived up his eyes to heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son. Hän nosti Jeesus päivässä ja kohti sanoa. That thy son may also glorify thee. Isä, let your tullut. Kirkasta poikasi, että poikasi kirkasta se sinulle. Koska sinä et antanut hänen valtaansa kaikille ihmisille. Että hän antaisi ihan kaikki sen elämän kaikille, jotka sinä olet hänelle antanut. Ja kes kolme. Hän antoi ainoan selkeän yksinkertaisen määritelmän ihan kaikista elämästä. And this is what he said. Näin hän sanoi. This is eternal life. Mutta tämä on ihan kaikkinen elämä. That the, that you may know the only true God, that you may know Jesus Christ whom he sent. Joka yksin on totinen Jumala, hänet, joka sinä olet lähettiin, Jeesus Kristuksen. So, if, if you want to know what eternal life is, jos sinä on tietää, mitä ihan kaikkinen elämä on, eternal life is the privilege that you can know the Father and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Ihan kaikki elämä, kun etuoikeasti voit oppia tuntemaan Jeesuksen isän, joka hän, isän ja Jeesuksen, joka hän lähetti. Not just in a casual way. Ei vaan niin kuin semmoisella muodollisella tavalla. Not just to know about them. Eikä vaan tietää heistä. Or learn facts about God and Jesus. Tai oppia faktoja Jumalasta tai Jeesuksesta. But to know Jesus personally. Intimately. And you have that possibility if you've received the gift of eternal life. You can't earn that gift. You can only get that gift by grace through faith. Paul said in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, he told us that you can sow to the flesh or sow to the spirit. So if you want to get the gift of eternal life working in your life, and you want to receive it, then I recommend you pay attention to this verse. Like I said, you only have two choices. One choice is so to the flesh. If you do that, in normal circumstances, you will reap the consequences. I don't care if you're born again, not born again, you will reap what you sow. And, and the only reason we don't reap what we sow is God. The devil doesn't care. He can't do anything about it. He's been defeated. But the scripture says, if you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you reap eternal life. If you want to get eternal life off the pages in your life, you have to believe, yes. If you don't believe what eternal life is, how is it going to work? If you believe, for example, that um, eternal life is just living forever, being born again, then you misdirect your faith. And the devil takes advantage of that. And he used a lot of people in the past to take simple truths in the word of God and corrupt them in places of intellectual learning Turmella niitä semmoisissa paikoissa, jos käytetään älyllistä oppimista. It's much nicer to just believe that eternal life means you live forever. On paljon mukavampaa uskoa, että iänkäkkäisessä elämässä kyse vain elämisestä ikuisesta. But if you actually believe what the word of God says, jos sä todella uskot siihen, mitä Jumalan sana sanoo, you've got to be honest then. Sun täytyy olla sellainen rehellinen. You've got to say, well, do I really know God? Sun täytyy kysyä, että tunnenko me todella Jumalan? Am I deceiving myself? Petänkö me itseni? Do I really communicate with God? Do I really share my heart with Him? Communicate with God. Do I really communicate with God? Do I really share my heart with Him? But that's good. 
Ik zal u wachten. Because if you find out now you don't know him, even though you're born again, it's not a guarantee that you know him. You can't communicate with him and him communicate with you. You don't know it. You just think you do. He is your father. So you should be able to come in his presence, sit with him, so that's not pie in the sky. That's not just something we have to think about only at the end of our lives. That's something we should be enjoying now. So it's, it's, you've got to be honest. So if you sow into the flesh, you reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, now, this is only possible with pure faith. You may think you're sowing to the spirit. Doing works. No, you're not. You're still sown to the flesh. You're doing religious works in spiritualized flesh. God didn't tell you to do it. You're doing it with the wrong motive. You're trying to impress God. You're trying to impress somebody else. I don't care. If you don't do it with a pure motive, you are not sowing in the spirit. But if you do it right, the end result of that sowing will be that you get to know God better than you did before you did that. Because you will reap everlasting life. That's what you get. So check your motive, check your attitude. You should be totally submitted to God. You should have a sin list. You should have things that you're working on to clean, to work on, to remove. If your attitude is not right, your motive is not right, you need to clean that up. And if you can do it right, like I said, you're going to reap good stuff. You don't like your reaping, change your sowing. Don't try and change God's word. It won't change. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 3, uh, here he talks about, a lot about seeking righteousness and Christian life. In Philippians 3, he says this, says, for we are the circumcision, <coughs> which worship God in the spirit now. And rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have no confidence in the flesh. So like I said at the beginning, if you want this kind of relationship with God, and you want to have a good idea of whether you're really on the right track or wrong track. Check your rejoicing. Should be rejoicing all circumstances. All circumstances. Somebody who's on the narrow way can can have more fun when everything is going wrong than most people can when it's going right. Their joy is not a mystery. That joy comes from being in right standing with God. They do not allow sin to get between them and God. There's only one thing that can separate you from the presence of God. Nothing can separate you from His love. Not just one thing will separate you from the presence of a holy God. And that is your sin. And you will lose your joy, you will lose your peace. And you won't be able to rejoice. So if you want to start somewhere, I recommend you start with rejoicing. If you can't rejoice, something's wrong. And like I say, God is not the problem. The devil is not the problem. That problem is that old carnal nature which you need to put in the grave. 
lihan luonto, joka pitää laittaa sinne hautaan. Paavali käyttää tässä sanaa ympärileikkaamista. Hän tarkoittaa siinä todellisia kristittyjä. Että todelliset kristityt riemuitsevat Kristuksen Jeesuksessa. All the time. Kaiken aikaa. And have no confidence in the flesh whatsoever. Ei, ei heillä ole minkäänlaista luottamusta lihaan. They know that God is the one who is, is faithful. He tietää, että Jumala on se, joka on uskollinen. So they don't need to work out anything in their mind. Joten he ei pähkäällä mitään omassa mielessään. In fact, like I said, your mind belongs to God. Miten sanoin, että sun mielesi on Jumala omaisuudessa. His writing pad. Se on hänen kirjoitusalustansa. Your mind should be still. Sun mielestä tulisi olla tyyni. The Bible says in, in the Psalms 46 uh, verse 10. Uh, Englannissa raamalla, jos on Psalmissa 46-11. It says there, be still and know that I'm God. Hiljentykää ja tietäkää, että minä olen Jumala. You're never going to get to know who he is until you keep your mind still. Sä et oppi ikinä tuntemaan, kuka hän on, että pidä mieltä kirjaisena, hiljaisena, tyynenä. And let him. Ja annat hänen write his laws in your heart and mind like it says in Hebrews. Kirjoita hänen lakinsa sun mieleesi ja sydämesi kuten Hebrews kirjassa. And he can do that by the Spirit. Ja hän voi tehdä sen hengen kautta. So that you can hear exactly what he wants you to do. Että sä voit kuulla täsmälleen mitä hän haluaa sun tekemään. Let me read the Philippians 3.3 in the Amplified Bible. Mä voin lukea Amplified Bible käännöksestä tänne Philippians 3.3. Kolme, kol, kol, luvu kolme ja oikein kolme. This is the classic edition. Siis on se Amplified alkuperäinen Amplified Bible käännös. Philippians 3.3. Philippians 3.3. Kolme, kolme. For we Christians are the true circumcision. Sillä me kristit olemme todellisia ympärileikattuja. Who worship God in spirit. Jotka pal- palvomme Jumalaa hengessä. And by the spirit of God. Ja Jumalan hengen kautta. And exalt and glory and pride ourselves in Jesus Christ. Ja riemuitsemme ja kerskaamme ja olemme ylpeitä Kristuksessa Jeesuksesta. And put no confidence or dependence on. Emmekä laita minkäänlaista luottamusta tai riippuvaisuutta. What we are in the flesh. Siihen mitä me olemme lihassa and on outward privileges and physical advantages and external tai ulkonaisiin etu, etuoikeuksiin ja fyysisiin niin kuin, etuisuuksiin tai, tai uh, ulkoisiin uh, mitä me näytetään ulkonaisesti so i hope that helps you today mä toivon, että auttaa sua tänään like i say the most important thing we need to learn to do Kaikkien tärkeä asia, joka meidän oppia, is to communicate with God. on kommunikoida Jumalan kanssa. So I have some books here with me today. Mulla on tänään kirjoja täällä mukana. I'm going to mention few of these because of time. Uh, ajan puutteen tähden mä mainitsin jotakin. I'm just introducing the subject. Mä vaan esittelen tätä aihetta. I'm not, I can't cover a lot of ground, but there are materials here that I believe would help you. Mä en, mä en voin kaikkia tässä niin kuin Käydä läpi, mutta mä uskon, että täällä on materiaalia, joka tulee auttaa sinua. These are not books that I wrote. Nämä ei ole mun kirjoittamia kirjoja. These books were written by the man of God who trained me personally. Vaan nämä kirjoitti se Jumalan mies, joka koulutti minut henkilökohtaisesti. I've been privileged to go around the world. Mun on etuoikeus matkustaa ympäri maailmaa. And I know just about passes on every country in the world today. Ja mä tunnen pastoreita lähes jokaista maailman maasta. But that's just because I obeyed God and did what he said. Mutta se on ainoastaan siksi, että mä tottelin Jumala ja tein mitä hän sanoi. I know I can do nothing. Mä tiedän, että mä en voi itse tehdä mitään. But I trust God and I ask him what to do in complicated situations. Mutta luotan Jumala ja mä kysyn häneltä, mitä tehdä haastavissa tilanteissa. And just obey. Ja mä vaan tottelen. Because he is love. Koska hän on rakkaus. So the books here will be great help to you. Mä uskon, että nämä kirjat tulee kovasti auttamaan sinua. And the main book that you have privilege to have today is this, the book called My Sheep Hear My Voice. Ja ensiasti tämä kirja on, on mitä meillä etu oikeastaan saada, niin se on Minun lampaani kuulevat minun ääneni. And this is the... First book that Joseph wrote. Uh, Joseph Hedgecock's ensimmäinen kirja. And uh, as I said, the author is Joseph Hedgecock. Ja on kirjoittaja on Joseph Hedgecock. He's the founder of Servants Lord Ministries. Hän on palvelutyön perustaja. He passed on uh, in 2021. Hän hän tota niin menehtyi vuonna 2021. Uh, but this book he has revised many times. Mutta tämän kirjan hän on uudistanut useita kertoja. And you may have seen it in different versions. Ehkä saat nähdä sen erilaisissa muodoissa. The first book looked looked like a little tiny pamphlet. Ja se eka kirja on pieni lentolehti näköinen. Se oli ihan näin ohut. And a few scriptures in it. Ja muuten vielä raamatun kohti Over the years, more and more scriptures been added. Mutta vuosien saatossa niin enemmän ja enemmän raamatun kohti on lisätty. The message has not changed. Mutta sanoma ei ole muuttunut. Same message. Sama sanoma. And this book particularly is 
a great advantage now. Ja on suuri niinku, apu. There's well over 300 scriptures in this book. So if you kirjoitus. have any problems believing, this should release your faith. Ja jos on mitä tahansa vaikeuksia uskoon, niin tämän pitäisi saada sinun usko virtaamaan. This is a simple message. Tämä on sanoma. If you're finding difficulty walking with God, jos koet sen haastavana vaeltaa Jumalan kanssa, then let me simplify it for you. Niin anna mun yksinkertaisen sulle. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 3, Raamattu sanoo, Sanoasti kirjan luvun 5 and 6 Ja kesä 5 ja 6 With all your heart Kaikista sydämestäsi Do not lead your understanding Älä kenno heidun omaan ymmärryksesi But in all your ways acknowledge him And he shall direct your path Ja englankinen käännös sanoo, että Vaan, vaan niin kysy häntä neuvoa kaikilla teillä niin hän so ohjaa sinun kohdassa. Your paths, Jos Jumala ei ohjaa sinun kohdassa, niin, niin ymmärretään oikein, että sinä olet sen ongelman. Sä et silloin tottele, tai seuraa näitä ohjeita. In our, in the Pentecostal movement where I'm from, siinä heluun tai herätyksessä, jos mä oon muuttanut, niin mä oon joutunut äh, niin kuin, tavallaan vastatusten omien omieni kanssa. Mä en etsi semmoisia vastakkain asettuja. Mutta ihmiset niin kuin, oikein väkisin vaatii sitä, että pitäisi rukoilla niin kuin, johdatusta. Ja he rukoili todella. Herra, johdata tätä veljää, johdata häntä Jeesuksen nimessä. But we do that in the Pentecostal movement. Näin tehdään helvon tai That's not what we should be doing. Mutta näin ei tulisi tehdä. You're doing something contrary to the word of God. Teet jotakin, mikä on vastoin raamatun sanaa. Then you need to change that behavior. Vaan muuta sitä käytöstä. Just not line up with the word of God. Jos ei ole samassa linjassa. Never adjust the word of God to fit your doctrine. Älä koskaan sovita yhteen Jumalan sanan sun omen oppisi kanssa. Always adjust your doctrine to fit the word of God. Vaan muuta oppisi sopimaan yhteen Jumalan sanan kanssa. So if God is not directing your path. Jos Jumala ei ohjaa sinun polkujesi. You are not trusting with all your heart. Jos Jumala et luota hänen kaikista sydämestä. Those of you listen today, you want the copy in in Finnish. Jos olet halunnut tämän kirjan suomeksi. So this book again, I can't say that what it says there, but you know, anyway. lamp, know. <laughs> hey, that's the one. <laughs> but this book uh, again is uh, being fully translated. <laughs> but as you go through this book, <laughs> please don't read it with your brain. <laughs> Make sure you're in the spirit. <laughs> Confess your sins. <laughs> and then just come before God and say, God, I want you to speak to me through <laughs> this. Ettei sano Jumala on haluan, että puhut tästä kautta. Many things you're doing this wrong. Koska on moni asia, mitä sinä teet väärin. If you're not walking in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, you are doing something wrong. Jos se vaihda sana olisikin kirjan luvun 5 ja 3 jälkeen se 5 ja 6. If you can do Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, you don't need to read the book. Teet jotain väärin, mutta sä pystyt tottelemaan tuon jaetta, niin silloin sinun ei tarvitse lukea tätä kirjaa. Then, if you want to know why you're going wrong, this book will help you. Jos haluat tietää, missä se menet vikaan, niin tämä kirja auttaa sinua. Most of it is scripture. Suurin osa siitä on raamattua. All you need kirjassa. to do is just be in the spirit. Varmistat vaatot hengissä. And ask the Holy Spirit to convict you. Ja pyydä jum, pyhä henkeä antamaan sinulle syyn. When you're doing something contrary to the truth. Kun sä teet jotakin mikä on vastoin totta. You take your pen. Ota sun kynäsi. And then you underline that. Ja ja alle viivalla se. Then you just ask God to forgive you and keep going. Ja ja pyydä Jumala antaa sinulle anteeksi ja jatka lukemista. I mean Obviously, then there comes a point you have to stop. But unless you want to read the whole book in one day, <laughs> hopefully, then as you're directed by the Spirit, you know when to stop. Keep, but keep going to get to the end. You know what I did when I first read this book. Se, mitä mä tein, kun mä ensi kerran luin tämän kirjan. I just humbled myself. Mä vaan nöyryin. I took all the knowledge I had. Otin kaiken sen informaation, mitä mulla oli. All the theological knowledge and training I had, I just threw it in the bin. Teologisen koulutuksen ja, ja, ja tota, kaiken muun. I, I said, rastin. I don't want to know anything. Mä sanoin, että mä en halua tietää mitään. And I started again. Ja mä aloitin alusta. And I made a decision. Mä tein päätöksen. I said, if there's anything good in what I believed before. Sain, jos on jotakin hyvää siinä, mitä mä aloitin uskon. Mitä mä aloitin Bible school or anything else. Mitä mä aloitin raamattokoulusta tai missään muussa. Then I believe the Holy Ghost, and I wish that you had will bring it back to my remembrance. If he doesn't bring it back, I don't want to even know it. So I started like that. Then I started with this book. And I believe God directed me to here, to this book. And all I want to do is repent. 
Kaik, kaikki mitä vanhin tehdä oli tehdä parannus. Full of lies. Moni täynnä valheita. Oman lihani tähden. So I wanted to find them. Mä halusin löytää ne. So I used this and it, it, käytin tätä. Like to say, so that's available for you today. Se on sulle nyt tarjolla. We also have this book here. It talks about that love relationship. Me on tässä mielessäni rakkausuudessa, jossa mä mainitsin. And if you really love Jesus, ja the best Jeesus, way you can show him that you love him, is the only way way you can show him you love is to ask him for a command. On, on, I mean, I know how to express love to my wife. I have a beautiful marriage. I have four children serving the Lord. I have a lot of fruit in my life. Godly fruit. But I don't know how to show to show love to God if he didn't tell me in his word. I know I'd love my wife, I can buy chocolates and things she likes, we can go out together, we can do nice things, buy flowers, all that stuff. But that's how to show love to my wife. It's not going to work with God. He created the flowers. <laughs> so what can I do to really show him that I love him? It may not make any sense to your mind. But if you really love him, you seek him for commands. So this book describes that process. It gives you different levels of love as you're seeking. And if you follow the instructions here, your love will grow. So you start with little commands, but every time you sow into God, you get more love back and then he takes you to a bigger command. Ja aina kun sä kysyt Jumalaan, sä antaisit vähän mm-hmm. enemmän rakkautta takaisin, ja silloin se vie sut suurimmille tasoille. God sees how much love you have in your heart any point in time. Ja aina Jumala näkee, kuinka paljon sulla on rakkautta sun sydämessä. And if you, can, if you can do things out of love, jos sä voit tehdä jum- asiat rakkaudesta käsin, that love relationship will grow. Niin silloin se rakkaus uudet tulee kasvamaan. Another little booklet we have here in Finnish. Tässä on suomikielinen kirja, mikä on... This, these books are in English and Finnish. Nää kirjat on sekä suomessa että englannissa. This one talks about the three and five witnesses. Tää puhuu kolmesta erehtymättömästä todisteesta. For those of you who've been listening, you say, well, how do I live my life without using my natural mind? Jos kysyt, että miten mä voin elää elämään ilman, että mä käytän mun luonnollista mieltä. Jos they've grown up thinking, well, I can't use my mind, I can't use my brain. Jos ne on vaan kasvettu, että mun täytyy käyttää mun but you don't use your mind. You're a fool if you use your mind. Let God use your mind. Let Him tell you what you need to think. You believe that Jesus is Lord. And you think about something He didn't tell you to think about, and He is not your Lord. You're fooling yourself. So this book describes the system of Processing thoughts, processing truth. Tämä kertoo siitä, kuinka käsitellä ajatuksia, kuinka käsitellä thoughts and truth. And a totuutta, kuinka käsitellä totuutta. So, for example, when a thought comes to your mind, esimerkiksi ajatus tulee sun mielesi. You don't test it with your mind. Älä puhuttele sitä sun oman mielesi alkuun. You allow the Holy Spirit to test it. Vaan anna pyhän hengen koetella sitä. And He will bear witness to it being the truth or not. Ja hän antaa todistuksen siitä, onko se totuus vai ei. If you use your mind, you're wasting time. Jos sä käytät mieltäsi, niin sä sä tulet aikaa. Because you cannot come to truth using your natural mind. Sä et voi päästä totuuteen ei mielesi avulla. So please follow the instructions in here. It will save you a lot of time. Tää kirja, jos sä seurat sen ohjeita, niin sä tulet säästää paljon aikaa. And there are three things that bear witness to the truth. On kolme, jotka todistaa totuudesta. The Father is the peace of God. Isän Jumalan rauma. Jesus is the Word. Jesus on sana. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God who lives inside of you. Ja pyhä henki on se Jumalan henki, joka asuu sun sisimmässä. Uh, this little, this Thick book here, I should say. This is the English version. And this is particularly a timely book. And it says, "Wake up, time is running out." And this is a message of re- of repentance for the church today. And if you want to make a fresh start, and you say, "I've lived my life, I'm basically carnal. I'm still Lord of my life. I call Jesus Lord, but." It's and you want to do a U-turn on that, then I recommend this book. It will get you started, put you on the right track. 
auttaa tekemään parannuksen kuolesta teosta. Sure your faith is purified in God. Ja että sinun uskos on puhdistettu ja se on Jumalan suunnitelma. Ja, ja se tulee sinun paljastaa monia eri asioita. Like jos te pidä synnin tunnista, niin älä lue tätä kirjaa. Niin, elä vaan mukavasti. But if you want conviction, jos sä haluat synnin tuntoa, this will bless you. niin tämä tulee silmään sinua. Conviction is a blessing. Mä uskon, että synnin tunto on siunaa. So if you don't like conviction, something wrong with you. Jos et sä pidä synnin tunnosta, niin jotain siis on kielä. This book is in English, it's in Finnish. Suomeksi ja englanniksi. Also then we have another book here, it was again a similar title. Sama otsikko. It's in English and in Finnish. This is talking about growing up spiritually, volume 2. Hengellistä kasvusta, ja se on osa kaksi. These books are loaded, and particularly in here it talks about the way that the mind should work. Tässä puhutaan erityis siitä, kuinka mielen tulisi toimia. How the renewing of the mind should look like. Miten mielen uudistaminen menee. There's a battle for your mind, really is. Ja sun mielestä käydään taistelua. So if you want to grow up spiritually, jos sä haluat kasvaa hengellisesti, please get a hold of this book. Niin, ota tääkin käsi isänsä. There's one chapter in here that would help you most of all. Tämä yksi luku auttaa kaikkein eniten. And it's about making judgments. Ja siinä puhutaan tuomioiden langettamista. So you're making judgments about anyone else, any other thing, you're going to get in trouble with God. Jos sä langetat tuomioita kenestä tahansa, niin silloin sä tulet hankaluuksi Jumalan kanssa. And when you read that chapter in here, jos sä luet sen luvun täällä, and you're judging, ja sä tuomit sen, you will feel sick and pale. Ja sä tulet kokemaan olevasi ihan sairaaksi ja kaukaksi. You can't read that book and not feel, read that chapter and not feel uncomfortable. Ja sä et voi olla, ihan voi olla tunnin, mutta olevasi epämennä, jos sä luet sen luvun. It's wonderful we have all these books in Finnish language. Ja mahtavaa, että ne on nää kirjat suomen kielellä. But this one talks about spiritual maturity. Ja puhuu hengellistä aikuisuudesta. Look at this like a mirror. You go to a mirror and you look at yourself and you say, "Not looking too bad." He says, "No, man, that's a fool." When you look in this one, you might look at yourself and say, "I look bad." Because what you're going to do is you're going to compare what Brother Hedgecock is saying is spiritual maturity. So to compare them, I said, "Very Hedgecock, a cuba hengli is an idol." And you're going to look at your own life. So that's what all my elements. And either you can disagree with him or you can agree with him. Joko sä oot samaa mieltä tai eri mieltä hänen kanssaan. Joko on jonkun mieltä. And you have to choose. Ja sun pitää vähän päättää. You either can accuse him of being wrong or you can accept him. Joko sä syytät häntä, että hän on väärästä ja sit sä hyväksyt totuuden. So this is probably a very challenging book. Tää voi olla semmonen kirja, joka tuo paljon haastaa sun tavoin. The fruit of maturity under difficult circumstances. Hän se kuvailee niinku hengellisen aikuisen tai kypsyyden hedelmää vaikustilaisessa. Eli sun oikeanlaisesta reaktiosta. Onko se hengellinen vai lihallinen reaktio? Mä suosittelen myös tätä kirjaa. Okei, mä täytyy lähteä. Mä täytyy lähteä. Mä päätetään tähän. 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 It's still going. They're saying, "What? What's going on over there?" Is that a few? Okay. Yeah. So this is the last book I mentioned. My mind is still thinking. It says the guilty prison. Oh, cool. It's the wrong place. And this is basically spiritualized flesh. It's about people who live on the outside. 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 It's about people who live But, you know, to God, they're the same. I mean, if you're doing bad works, you're also doing good works. Both are wrong to God. The only works we should be doing is the works that our Father in Heaven has told us to do. So, this is good because in the book it describes the ways in which Satan can trap you and cause you to live carnally. Tämä on se, että kuvailee niitä keinoja, millä saatana saa ansaan sinut ja saa elämään lihallisesti. Näin sä voit ainakin oman itsesi pelastaa tai pelastautua ikään kuin. Ehkä sä olis teidän profeettoja tai evankeliset tulee sun luoksesi ja laskee kätänsä sun päälle. Rukoile ihana rukouksen. Mutta tehkää, että sä 
save yourself. That's the thing. Ja the only way anyway you can save yourself is to repent. Somebody else can pray for you. I can pray for you. But you've got to save yourself. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this time. I pray that the message will reach the right heart. As many are seeking you right now. And know these are the last days. So Father, I pray for them. There's their broken lives, they're ready to receive the truth. They will embrace that word. Because it's a lifeline to them. Koska se on heille. But for those who are casual, give them something. But if they can really repent deeply, they will receive the word too. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much.